Yo. What's up, everybody? RageCage20 here. I just had to listen to one more Mr. Beast story. You know what it is. It is what it is. Because uh, this one looks very exciting, very interesting. Today we have never pissed this woman off. Now, the picture... The original, I, I thought it was the... Uh, the one the, still might be. Uh, I, I remember seeing a top list of uh, interviews with like serial killers and psychopaths and etc. 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 I saw a reaction to it at first, and then I just went and watched it again to check in. I thought it was the woman from that. I think her name's Eileen something. Don't remember her last name. Fucking insane. This person looks way older, but still has that crazy wild eye. So it might be her. Just might be at a different angle or something. Um, no idea, <clears throat> but it looks like insane psychopathic lady, uh, who looks like she's wearing inmate, uh, clothing, so, I'm not sure where this story is gonna go, I don't know if it's gonna start off in prison, or how this person got there, I don't know if it's gonna be a mystery, or just like, yes, this story is clear about this person, no idea. But I'm sure we'll find out together. So, let's bring it on down here. Let's get ourselves some Mr. B action. And let's have a good time. In early 2014, a sheriff's department in a little town in Oregon conducted a search of a huge 20-acre farm tucked away inside of a forest. A local man had gone missing recently, and this farm was one of the few places they knew he had been. Very quickly into the search, a deputy was walking around the outside of the barn when he saw something strange on the ground. At first, he had no idea what it was, but as he got closer, it became very obvious. Not only would this discovery become front page news all across the country, but it would also lead investigators to discover something much more sinister going on in that little town. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So, if that's of interest to you, please offer to make the like button a cup of coffee, but be sure it's full of coffee grounds. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications okay. so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. How do you pay? Nice. By most people's standards, Susan Monica's life had been pretty good. She had a small but very close group of friends, she had a great job working as an engineer, and she lived in one of the most exciting cities in the world, San Francisco, California. But yeah. Susan was not happy. Moving to the big city was not so much a choice as it was a product of life and circumstance. Deep down, Susan had always been someone who preferred peace and quiet and being alone, things that were in rare supply in a big city like San Francisco. Sure. Many nights after work, Susan would come home to her apartment and she would sit there and dream about moving away from the city and living off the grid somewhere on a farm, you know, raise her own food and be totally self-sufficient away from everybody else in the world. And then one day in 1991, when Susan was 43 years old, she made that dream a reality. That year, she wound up purchasing a 20-acre farm located in a forest in a little town in Oregon called Weimar. However, this farm was really not a farm. There was nothing on it. There was no house for Susan to live in. There was no barn for her animals or tools. There was no running water, no electricity, no septic system. It was just pure Oregonian wilderness. Yeah. But to Susan, want, it right? was perfect. Yeah. The property kept her <laughs> far got, yeah. away from other people, and she liked the idea of having to literally build her own farm. After all, she was an engineer by trade, so she actually knew how to build buildings efficiently like and safely. Systems, yeah. And she was a big, strong, sturdy woman who was not afraid of manual labor. So when Susan finally arrived in Weimar and made her way up the winding dirt road through the forest and arrived in front of her property and looked out at the vast, rugged landscape for the first time, she was filled with a rush of excitement. Even though there was nothing on her 20 acres, it already felt like home. Over the next several months, Susan would transform these 20 acres into a neat little farm, complete with a big barn and a shack for her to live in and a few animal pens for livestock. However, after the farm... 
so if this whole thing is just about Susan going crazy and all that stuff uh, and doing that, I don't think I, I think what I've seen is clear they're not the same person. So I wonder what the fuck happened, Lyleen, man. That that bitch is crazy. We'll see how crazy this Susan is. <clears throat> was built, Susan realized that building the farm was actually not the hard part. The hard part was maintaining the farm, going out there every day and doing all of her chores, nice feeding all the animals and doing all the different projects she had in mind. It was exhausting. And so not long after the farm was complete, Susan realized that as much as she wanted to be totally alone out there, she had to set that aside and hire some help. And so Susan printed out all of these help wanted flyers and put them all over town in Weimar. And before long, people began making their way up to her property to inquire about the role. Most of these applicants were people who struggled to find work elsewhere, either because they lived a sort of transient lifestyle, bouncing around from place to place so no one was ready to hire them long term, or because they had a criminal record and just straight up could not get a job. But Susan didn't care about either of those things. All she cared about was the people she hired would work hard and they would respect the peaceful, calm atmosphere she was fostering on her farm. Basically, do the work and leave me alone. And over the next 20 years, Susan would find dozens of people who were able to do just that. Most of them would work for Susan only for a short period of time. Others would stick around for a little bit longer, but eventually all of Susan's workers kind of rotated pretty quickly and moved on to other things. And when that happened, Susan would simply put up more help wanted flyers in town and hire more people. And in all the 20 years that Susan had been hiring these temporary workers at her farm, after they did move on and went somewhere else, Susan never heard about them again. However, that was about to change. On January 1st, 2014. So I assume a lot of this, uh, like the nice thing about this is you probably don't have to do a lot of, uh, like really off the grid city or town, probably a lot of people have never even heard of. Um, you can probably hire these people, not have to do a lot, like probably any bookkeeping, all under the table, no taxes. Stuff like that, you know, no, don't have to worry about health insurance and, and whatnot, you know, so probably pretty easy to get people rotating in. Susan, who was 66 years old by this point, God was damn. outside of her shack out on her driveway. Okay, that doesn't look like the same person. Maybe it is, I don't know. When she happened to look up and see a car coming up her road. Now remember, she lives in the middle of nowhere. No one comes out to see her. So this is a very rare event. And so Susan is totally keyed in on this car. And this car, they pull into her driveway and then out of the car pop three young people. It was two young men and one young woman. And before Susan could even ask them who they were or why they were here, they were telling her. They said they were looking for their father, Robert Haney, who at one point had told them he was working on Susan's farm in exchange for a little cash, and also Susan was letting him park his camper on her property, and he was living in that camper. The kids said their father always checked in with them at least once every couple of months, but they had just gone this really long stretch without hearing from him, and since he didn't have a cell phone and no permanent address, they had no real way of getting in touch with him, and so they were out there looking for him to make sure he was okay. And so they asked Susan, do you remember our dad, Robert? And if so, do you know where he is? Even though this whole situation was totally surprising for Susan because she almost never got visitors, so that alone was kind of jarring for her. But when she heard the kids say their dad's name, Robert Haney, she immediately knew who that was. Susan told them that she had hired their father the previous spring to help build a structure on her farm. And initially, Robert was really nice to have around the farm. He worked really hard, he kept to himself, he was quiet, and he had a dog that was really friendly and loving. But in August of the previous year, so five months into Robert's employment on Susan's farm, Susan would tell them that their dad totally changed. He started drinking really heavily and not really working very much and spending a lot of the day just kind of ranting and raving outside of his camper about how he wanted to exact his revenge on someone. Susan would eventually find out that what Robert was talking about is apparently one of his kids had been assaulted and he felt very guilty that he had not been there to protect his child. And so the way Robert was handling this guilt was by drinking and thinking about getting his revenge on the attacker. Now, while Susan... Question is if this is a real story, if Susan's making it up or not. We'll cover up what she did to him. 
no idea. And did understand why Robert felt the way he did and why he was kind of acting the way he was, it didn't change the fact that Robert's behavior had become very disruptive on her farm. Which and the one the thing rules. Susan really wanted was peace and quiet. Ooh. Yeah, that, 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 that's probably her. <laughs> she, she did so. And so she decided she would have to go confront Robert about his behavior and potentially fire him if he couldn't find a way to calm down. But before Susan ever had to do that, Robert one day just walked right up to her shack. He handed her an envelope filled with cash and he asked Susan if she wouldn't mind looking after his dog for a while. And Susan was so taken aback by his complete change in behavior. That's a lot and this request that she just took the envelope and said okay I'll look after your dog and then Robert nodded as thank you he turned around and he walked away from her and then a few moments later Susan's standing there with the envelope in hand watching as Robert is climbing into some white car that had just pulled up in front of the property she didn't know who was in the car with him and then the car turned around and drove out of sight Susan told the kids that that had happened back in September, so about four months ago, and since he left, she had not heard from him, despite the fact she still had his dog, and she told the kids that a lot of Robert's stuff was still in his camper. Susan brought the kids over to the side of her property where Robert's camper was, and when they went inside, sure enough, all their father's things were all over the place, but the one item that immediately stood out to them was their father's tool belt. They knew their father was a traveling handyman, that was how he made his living, and so it begged the question, why would he leave his tool belt here if he knew he was going to be gone for several months potentially? It didn't make any sense. After leaving Robert's camper, the kids thanked Susan and asked her to please be in touch if she learned anything else about their dad, and she said she would, and then the kids got back in their car and they began driving south towards the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. When they got there, they asked to file a missing person report for their dad. However, they learned very quickly that it was going to be very challenging to locate their dad because their dad lived this transient lifestyle yeah. with no cell phone, he had no Down permanent address, months. he had nothing that could really be traced. But the investigators agreed with Robert's children that their dad's absence was a big concern given the fact that his last interactions with Susan had consisted of him drinking very heavily and talking about going and getting his revenge on his child's attacker. And so the sheriff and the deputies were very... Aren't they the kids? The kids know who the attacker is? Well, they said their kids showed up, right? Was it a different kid? I feel like I'm missing a piece of information here. Very concerned that that was exactly what Robert had done. He had gone out and potentially murdered someone and now was in hiding. So they asked Robert's kids if they could think of absolutely anything that could possibly allow investigators to track down Robert. And at some person. point, one of the kids said, oh, what about my dad's EBT card? EBT cards, or electronic benefit transfer cards, mm -hmm. are like debit cards for state welfare services. You can use the cards to buy things like groceries, and the cards are definitely traceable. Huh. A few days later, when Robert's EBT card trace came is. back, investigators saw the card had been used just one month earlier in a Walmart located about 30 minutes southwest of Susan's farm. Now, this trace obviously didn't tell investigators where Robert was right now or what kind of condition Robert was in, but they had no other leads to operate on, so they decided they would go to the Walmart and see what they could find. When they got there, the investigators were led to the back room of the building where they were able to review the security footage from the previous month when Robert was supposedly there with his EBT card. But after reviewing hours and hours and hours of footage, the investigators never saw Robert on camera. However, they did see Susan on mm -hmm. camera, and unbelievably, I mean, this one's pretty. This one's pretty straightforward. They kind of tell you in the. He kind of tells you in the thumbnail in the title. Uh, but like this one, this one's pretty easy. Unless there's a hook in here, this one's pretty easy. Um, he disturbed the peace of the farm. He had to go missing, man. Had to go missing. But uh, like. <clears throat> I'm just surprised that it hasn't come up yet. That either, I mean, I assume if it has come up at some point in the story, Mr. B specifically not mentioning it because it blows part of the story open. But like, you know, his kids show up. She says he went to go avenge one of his kids, assuming one of them, uh, assault her. 
at what point they're just like, oh, well, this is the person who, it was me, they, this person assaulted me, we go check on them, or more likely, they're all like, we've never been assaulted. So what is he talking about? My guess. And that's why he, Mr. B hasn't mentioned it yet, he's probably saving it for later. They had never been assaulted, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> there was no assaulter. You know, I, I'm so I'm sure that's why it hasn't come up yet. She was the one using Robert's EBT card. Yeah. And so obviously this was very suspicious. And right away, the investigators left the Walmart, went back to their office and began the process of getting a search warrant to search Susan's farm. Yeah. Last week didn't happen ever. That's interesting. No, Last no, night, no. I decided I wanted to treat my family to a nice homemade dessert. And so I headed and save up to 40% Ridge. through December 22nd. Again, that's ridge.com slash Mr. Ballin. Looks pretty cool. A few days later on January 10th, the sheriff and his deputies arrived at Susan's property. And when they pulled onto her driveway, Susan came outside to greet them. When she asked them, you know, what's going on? They told her, hey, we're here to search your property in connection with Robert Haney's disappearance. And before Susan could ask any more questions, the sheriff said to her, hold on, just turn around. Let's go back inside. I need to talk to you privately. And so Susan, who was very shocked by this. Yeah, um, they got a warrant to search your house for probable cause. But you know, I don't know why I'm talking about <laughs> Pause in the middle, it goes black for a second. Uh, there's nothing you can really do. They're gonna search it. Like whether they have to put you in handcuffs, put you in the back of a car, or something. They're gonna search your house. <laughs> Just said, okay, and she turned around and led the sheriff into her house while the other deputies fanned out across the property to uh -oh. begin this big search. Once inside of Susan's house, they sat down in her kitchen, and right away, the sheriff says to Susan, Okay, I have you on camera using Robert's EBT card. I know you stole it, so you need to tell me where Robert is right now, or it's going to get a whole lot worse for you. And as soon as he said this, Susan's look of shock on her face quickly turned into a look of kind of relief. It was like suddenly she understood what was going on here. And she says to the sheriff, no, I didn't steal his EBT card. He gave it to me along no. with an envelope full of cash when no, he not. left four months ago. And he told me to use it to buy dog food for his dog that I'm looking after. And since Robert had been gone for all these months, she had run out of cash to pay for the dog food and now was using the EBT card. Uh. Susan also added that if she had just stolen the card from Robert, she wouldn't be able to use it because it requires a pin number. And Robert gave her the pin number. I mean, that is true. That is true. I wonder if this is ha it really has a huge turn in there. So this, nah, that's no. But the title is no way, right? I don't know. We'll see. That's how she was able to use it. The sheriff was not totally sold. On right. I'm sure it's a way you could get it from him. Maybe he held him at gunpoint or something. I'm sure he'd let you know what it is. But, I mean, still. On Susan's story, and so he continued to ask more questions, trying to trip Susan up about how she came to acquire this card. But Susan was very firm that Robert had given her the card, and that was it. And so after several minutes, the sheriff realized that Susan was likely telling the truth, which meant the EBT card angle was likely a dead end, and they would have to call off the search. But as the sheriff was standing up to leave the kitchen and leave the property altogether, a deputy from outside came running into the kitchen and without saying a word, just bent down and whispered something into the sheriff's ear. And as the sheriff is listening to this deputy, his face is contorting in disgust. He can't believe what he's being told. And after the deputy stands up and leaves the kitchen, the sheriff takes a deep breath and then looks at Susan and says, ma'am, you're gonna have to come with us. Back at the station, a now very flustered Susan was led into a small interrogation room where she sat down looking totally anxious. She's looking around, wondering what's going on. And then the sheriff walked into the room, immediately something. hit record on the camera, and then looked at Susan and says, Is this sure say Michigan? <laughs> she lived in San Fran, now living in Oregon, and she has a sweatshirt that says Michigan. This girl can't pick a loyalty to anywhere. Has anyone? Oop, wrong button. 
All right, let's, okay, let's jump back here a second. Let's, let's get this going again. Room immediately hit record on the camera and then looked at Susan and says, has anyone died on your property? The story that Susan would tell the sheriff that day in the interrogation room was so completely unexpected and horrific, it would make headlines all across the country. I'm assuming they, uh, she gave them the rules. If you disturb the peace, you don't just get fired around there. You get fired. Maybe with a gun, maybe not, I don't know. But still, you know, the metaphor. Before Susan began this story, she told the sheriff that everything she had said about Robert Haney's disappearance had been the truth. However, she had left one little detail out. After Robert had handed Susan that envelope full of cash and the EBT card, and then climbed into that stranger's car and driven away, after that, Robert had actually come back to her farm and recently. Susan said she discovered his return when one morning she got up and she went outside to go feed her animals when she looked over at the pig pen and saw all the pigs who would normally be laying down and lounging around at that time of the day. They were all up and they had converged in one portion of the pig pen and they had kind of formed. Pigs will eat humans. They will eat anything, really. But they, they, they will eat humans. To circle around something on the ground. As Though, I mean, she probably fed them to the pigs, to him to the pigs, to be honest. But, um, actually, did happen in the. <laughs> whose body was that? I don't remember whose body it was. I think, I think they got a severed arm from somewhere in, a D, in my D and D campaign or something. From some of the giants or something, and I think they were gonna get searched by the police because they the the, uh, the the law enforcement because they got in trouble occasionally, and they threw it into a pig pen so that it would be devoured. Anyways, as if they were all trying to look <laughs> at something on the ground. Now, Susan said this was totally uncharacteristic, so obviously something weird was going on, and so Susan dropped her food and rushed over to the fence. She climbed into the pig pen, and as she got closer and closer to all these pigs, she realized they weren't just looking at something on the ground, they were eating something on the ground. And so Susan goes right up to this ring of pigs, and she begins pulling them aside, and then right in the middle on the ground is Robert. He was laying on his back and his insides had all been torn out. It was like the pigs were disemboweling him. And the most shocking thing is Robert was still alive. He was moving his arm and groaning. Susan tried to pull the pigs off of Robert, but she said they kept coming back and really aggressively continued to eat Robert. It was like they were in this feeding frenzy. And so Susan said, you know, I thought about lifting him up and moving him, but Robert was practically split in two. And she felt like if she tried to move him, that would kill him anyway. Anyways. And so Susan said she did the thing that she thought was right at the time. She left the pig pen, went into the barn, got a shotgun, yeah, yeah. ran back to the yeah, scare them. pig pen, raised the weapon, and fired it into Robert. Susan told the sheriff, I mean, yeah, no reason to die being eaten alive, but that this was purely an act of mercy. She was ending his suffering. Yeah, after Robert, there's nothing she could do there. But I'm pretty sure, if not her, someone intentionally fed. I'm pretty sure it's her. But <laughs> um, she, 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 she purposely fed him to the pig. Was dead. Susan said she just left the pig pen, and then three days later, she went back into the pig pen with bags and collected the little bits of Robert that had not been eaten by her pigs. Yeah. And then she took those bags of remains really and of chucked them into her barn on top of the trash pile. But clearly, Robert's remains had not remained in the barn because the thing that deputy had whispered into the sheriff's ear when the sheriff was talking to Susan in the kitchen was, Sir, we found a leg outside. It was Robert's leg, and it was found not inside of the barn in the trash pile, but out in the middle of her property, just out in the open. Susan, when confronted with that information, suggested that, you know, maybe a wild animal had gone into the barn, got a hold of it, and dragged it off. The sheriff... Nah, she lied. ...didn't even know what follow-up questions to ask. 
And so he just said, well, why didn't you call 911 when you first saw Robert? I mean, maybe we could have saved him. Or at least after he was dead, why didn't you tell someone? Susan would say that the reason she didn't tell anyone is she was afraid that if word got out about what her pigs had done, then her pigs would be euthanized and she would lose a major revenue stream because she sold her pigs meat in town. And she said even if her pigs were not euthanized, she was worried people in town would not want to buy her pigs meat. That, because human fed meat, <laughs> that her people might stop working for her. After they learned her pigs... But again, I think this is just all lies. Pigs were attacking and eating humans. Susan would tell the sheriff exactly where they could find the bags that contained Robert's remains, and she even said she would take a polygraph test to show she was now telling the whole truth. But when she actually sat down to take the polygraph test, she kept fidgeting and coughing and doing these really dramatic sighs, and it was causing the test operator to get really inaccurate reading. Yeah purposely fucking it up. And so when this first polygraph test was over, the results were inconclusive. And so the investigators made Susan take another test, but again, she continued to fidget and yawn. And so finally, the investigators in the room watching this happen just called off the test. And when they did, they said to Susan, you know, hey, we're gonna search your farm. And if there is anything on your farm that you have not told us about, you're gonna be in serious trouble because we're gonna find it. At this point, Susan kind of stopped fidgeting and she looked up at the investigators and after a long pause, she reached out across the table and grabbed a piece of paper and a pen. She pulled it back and she began drawing something. And after a few seconds, it became pretty clear she was drawing a map of her farm. And after the map was all drawn out, she drew a big X in the middle of it and then slid the map back across the table to the investigators. And she said, if you go to that X, you'll find Steven. And the investigators are like, Who's Steven? Who fucks Steven? What, you crazy bitch? We're talking about Robert. What are you talking about? Well, it would turn out Robert was not the only farmhand to die on Susan's property. Of course. In 2012, about a year before Susan hired Robert, she hired another man named Steven Delacino. And a cool looking dude. According to Susan, Steven was a lot like Robert. He was really easy to get along with. He was quiet. He worked hard. But at some point, Susan said they had a big falling out. Susan said she started to suspect that Stephen was stealing her guns in her barn, and so she went to confront him. And during this confrontation, they got into this big fight, and Susan said she didn't really remember all the details of what happened next, but at some point during this fight, a gun went off, and then Stephen fell to the ground in the middle of the pig pen with his head bleeding, and all of Susan's pigs... Yeah, no. Pretty much if someone upsets her, if someone disturbs the peace, pisses her off, she kills him and feeds him to the pig. Because pigs will get rid of almost all the evidence. They will eat it. Pigs do that. Suddenly swarmed him and began eating him. The stunned investigators again asked Susan, okay, if that really happened the way you said it did, why didn't you call 911 if this was like an accident? And Susan would say again that her big fear was her pigs would either be euthanized or word would get out that her pigs were eating people and the people in town would not want to buy her pigs meat because of that. In the end, as far-fetched as Susan's Absolutely. stories were about what happened to Robert Haney and Stephen Delacino, there was never any evidence that actually contradicted her claims. And I mean, this is true. I mean, she is telling you the truth, eventually. But, like, you can tell that she's lying, but you don't really have any proof. But the fact... Yeah, I mean, again, you can tell she's lying, but I think she's definitely going to jail. <laughs> so as a result, when Susan went on trial for murdering Robert and Stephen, it came down to whether or not the jury believed Susan. Is that Susan? Susan looked really different in all these pictures, man. And they didn't. Not at all. They believed that Susan was completely lying and that in oh, yeah, 100%. reality, Susan, who was known to have a very quick temper, shot Stephen and shot Robert very much on purpose yeah. and then threw them into her pig pen. We can yeah. only hope they were dead before her pigs began eating them. Because that's fucking horrible. 
On April 21st, 2015, more than a year after Robert's children had reported him missing, Susan was Jesus, she keeps getting crazier. <sighs> convicted of two counts of murder for Robert and for Stephen, yep. and two counts of abusing a corpse. She was sentenced to a minimum of 50 years in prison. While in custody, Susan would be overheard saying there were 17 other bodies buried on her property. Susan. Susan. However, when the police went out there and searched again very extensively, they never found... Jesus, Susan. <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> any other They're like Dr. Evil up in this bitch. Mates. So, that's gonna do it. If you got something out of this episode and you haven't done this already... There's no picture. That's the thumbnail in there. But it's like another look for Susan. Yeah, you could definitely tell she was lying and that you were correct when she's like, yeah, there's also seven, uh, 17 other bodies out there. You should go check. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. That's crazy shit, man. That's real crazy shit. I mean, there were the, 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 there wasn't much to pause and discuss in that one, which I'm sure a lot of people are happy about. Because uh, that one, looking at, I'm pretty sure that was, there's only one cut in there, right? It's, right? So we're looking at like 31 minutes on a 23 minute story that's really good for me <laughs> uh, unless it's 51 but I don't think it is we didn't bust that much um so um yeah huh but yeah I mean that one was pretty straightforward you knew it was her and it was just kind of letting everything roll out I, he didn't explain at any point that um the whole kids assault thing so maybe that was true and she was she you know he had he had talked about it possibly did uh before she killed him um so he probably knew she probably knew i so, yep that's what he went to excuse me that's what he went did and whatnot um but uh oh, wow so um I don't know if there was actually that many bodies there. I think she was just fucking with them at the end because I think they would have at least found one. You know, if there was 17 body parts or stuff out there and they did an extensive search and whatnot, but, you know. Um, yeah, that that's a psycho bitch, man. <laughs> that's, a psych that's a psychopathic motherfucker right there. There's a lot of crazy people out in the world, man. There's a lot of crazy people out in this world. But yeah, a farm, especially if you're going full on farming, like you know, livestock and everything, yeah, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of work, man. That's like a lot of work for one person to do. Like, I don't know how you didn't know that beforehand. But um, yeah, okay. So <laughs> wow, I mean, there's a chance. If uh, if she never used that card, that they probably wouldn't have had uh, a warrant to search her land. At that point, she probably would have gotten away with it until maybe a future fuck up or whatnot. Because um, apparently, it seemed like that story was true. She could have easily passed, potentially passed a test saying that yes. Um, I, uh, yeah, like he gave me the money and whatnot, which is possible. Um, but I don't know, man. Fuck. <laughs> I don't know, man. So, yeah. She just didn't use his card. Uh, she probably would have got away with it. I don't really think there's any lessons, um, to really, to really learn here. Just, you know, if, like, 
if you want to go live the farm life, understand how much work that is. And if you don't want anyone else around you, uh, probably figure out a way to do it all yourself. I mean, it doesn't sound like she did anything else, so, you know, every day probably would have, that's probably what you would have done every single day, you know? What else are you going to do? Oh. Uh, so I'm sure she could have figured out a way to do it by herself, but like, you know, if you don't like having other people around, um, and then don't have other people around and find a way to do the work yourself. I guess it's the only real lesson we can learn. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm really excited to get to, uh, to some of these other stories here. Uh, I'm really interested to see what that disturbing secret is in that hospital. I want to see that f evil forest one. That that sounds really fucking cool. The bell witch haunting, you know, all that good. All the new ones there. I can't wait to get to those. What we got going down here? T cra t crazy Texas cat lady. That sounds exciting. The female Hannibal Lecter. I really want to get to that one. Um, yeah. So there's, there's some good ones down here. There's some good ones down here. I really. I have a theory about the someone in this photo has an evil secret one. I have a theory, and I feel like I'm right, because <laughs> I always am. Yeti? It was the Yeti. It wasn't Alexander. It was the Yeti. Everyone knows this. Uh, so I feel like I know who did it. I know who has the evil secret. I know it. So I can't wait to get to that one. Anyways, um, thank you all so much for joining me here today. That was a that was a fun, quick little story. I'm going to bed, and I will see you all next time.